Have you ever looked at complex objects and wondered how on earth you're supposed to model that in 3D? Well, this video is for you. Recently on my YouTube channel, I covered a similar topic of how we can break objects down into their smaller parts. And we looked at how to make a table lamp with a practical example. Check out the link in the description to that video. This time we're looking at more complicated objects and how we might adapt and have a different approach to those. This video is the type of thing we get up to on my Ultimate 3D Artist program, an eight week intensive boot camp designed to guide you into becoming a 3D artist. The program includes assignments and personalized feedback to help you develop your skills quickly. So if you like what you see, then check out the links in the description to join the program. It's currently on sale, but do hurry because there's only a few days left before it starts on September the 7th. Again, links in the description to sign up or find out more. Without further ado, let's take a look at how we can make complex objects in 3D. So in the video on my channel, I looked at a table lamp and a similar example would be something like these binoculars, a fairly simple shape, still relatively complex to model as a beginner, but a similar level to the table lamp. So have a quick think to yourself how you would go about modeling this. So hopefully if you looked at my first video, you'll be thinking about how to break it down into separate objects. So things like the glass, for example, can be a separate object, especially as it's got a different material. This whole section up the top here, that can be a separate object separated by this joining piece in the middle here. So these two goggle bits are going to be separate objects separated by the bit underneath that joins this middle section together. This joint in the middle here, which is your focus dial or whatever it's called. Again, that's a separate object, these middle pieces. Then you have a joining piece again through the middle here and the end lens is just there. And obviously we'd use something like a mirror modifier so we'd only have to model one half. Another thing to consider when modeling is how much detail do you really need? If we're in a game, how close are you going to be to this object? Or can we just have the outline so we can kind of recognize the shape from a distance? It's fairly easy if we have two kind of cylinders, maybe a little bit of shape at the top here, in the middle and at the bottom, and then a joining piece in the middle. It should be fairly obvious that that's a pair of binoculars. If we need to get up close, we don't necessarily have to add all the details. Can we add things in through textures. Certainly on the dial here, you probably want to use textures rather than have lots of topology for that ribbed effect. So how detailed do you actually need to go? Can you use textures or are you able to just have the outline shape in there? Now that's all said and good when it's obvious how you break the objects down. But what about a complex object like this gun here? At first glance, it's not that easy to break down. This bottom piece here, looks very much like it's molded together. We've got some really complicated textures on here. Perhaps we can separate out the top piece here, but that gives us only two sections. Well, I still take a similar approach, but perhaps slightly more detailed to start off with. There's several ways you could approach this. Generally speaking though, you still want to think about the block out shape. So at the top here, we've got a fairly simple rectangle. Once you've put that in, then we might start thinking about the bevel and the cuts in here would add in loop cuts around this position and then start kind of cutting out that shape. This block inside here could possibly be a separate object, but we always start with the basic rectangle and then slowly add the details in exactly the same way we did with our table lamp. Looking at the base of the gun, I think we've got a separate section in here. I'm fairly confident that that detaches. So when it is actually a separate object in real life, then you can model it as a separate object. Even if this was molded on, which I'm pretty sure it's not, because it's difficult to distinguish whether it's molded and part of the same object, we can then make it as two separate objects and no one's going to know the difference. Then we're left with this fairly complex shape down here with the handle. Obviously the magazine can be a separate object, but again, it's a case of modeling the big shape first. I'd probably model just this handle bit and then the trigger guard second with some extrusions coming out here. The trigger itself can be a separate object. So you can see how we're slowly building up. What's more tricky though, is when we come to this texture here. Now that we would certainly do as textures. A bump map will help here. That's what gives it the illusion of bumpiness and height. A displacement texture might help as well. That's a texture that actually distorts the geometry. So would need more topology in there, would need more faces in order to push them and pull them around in this pattern. You certainly don't want to be modeling this. I guess you could sculpt this pattern on if you really needed it to be very, very detailed and very high quality. Even then you might find it tricky and you're probably better off with a displacement map. All these extra details like what seems to be the safety in here and this kind of cutout section for the safety. Those are the details that you add in second. The actual switch mechanism, that could be a separate object. And this you would model on 
with extra topology. And as a bonus tip, you try and use the extra topology that you've created in other areas like these circles here as well. So if we've got extra topology going across here, they can help us with these cut out circular pieces here. So that's how I would approach more complicated objects like this gun here. It's a very similar approach where we get the basics down first and then we slowly add up detail. It's not the only approach. Some people like to do these things with lots of booleans and have detailed objects to start with and cut them out with other detailed objects. That's kind of a separate route and specialism within hard surface modeling. But you do also have to consider the output of your objects, whether a certain level of detail is needed or necessary or will the outline or silhouette, as it's sometimes known, is that all you need? And therefore you can go a lot more low poly. But the basic premise still starts the same, which is getting those base shapes down. So hopefully that in some way helps you when you're approaching these complicated objects like this gun here. And hopefully you'll have a little bit more confidence to take those kind of objects on as a modeling project. If you haven't already, then do check out the other video on my channel for the more simpler objects. And if you like what you see, you might want to check the link for the art program to find out more about that. Like I say, you might need to hurry because there's only a few days left on that one. If you've got any questions or thoughts, then comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.